What is up, YouTube? So, today we're talking about jazz. on Instagram and I asked the people that follow me there, hey, do you have any questions about jazz? And you all asked a lot of questions about jazz and playing jazz drums. And I feel like a lot of them can be summed up with what I'm going to call here like my quick tips to sounding jazzier. So these quick tips are five things you can do to start incorporating into your playing and whether it's for a college audition or you just joined jazz band or every now and then someone, some band you play with calls a jazz tune and you're uncomfortable with it, these things are quick little tips that are technique or uh, conceptual things that you can apply to your playing. So they're not specific exercises, but they're concepts you can apply to your playing to start sounding more jazzy. Uh, and I know that that's not really the, you know, what is jazz? That's a whole thing. I'm not going to go there. Jazz does, for the most part, sound a certain way, and there are ways, I think, that you can kind of hack how to get there. So these are five things you can do to get your playing sounding a little more jazz than it is right now. So the first thing you can do is tune your drums differently. Um, you know, we live in a world right now where a lot of country, rock, worship music, all of that stuff has very big sounding drums, almost artificially big sounding drums. And it's like really thuddy and it's like and it's fat and it's great. I, I love that stuff. However, <laughs> that's not really what a lot of people that are playing jazz go for. And as you can see by this kit, and you could hear in the playing up front, these are tuned a little bit higher than all of that stuff, right? And the reason we tune our drums a little bit higher in jazz is because they sing better. They're a little more melodic. They're a little, you don't have to hit them. If a, if a drum head is stretched tighter, AKA it's tuned higher, if it, that drum head is stretched tighter, it's going to sing more quickly than if um, it's tuned lower, right? Because there's more tension on it, so you, have to, you don't have to hit it as hard to make it vibrate. So, tuning your drums a little bit higher and also using thinner heads. Again, two ply heads are thick and you have to hit them a little bit harder to get them to resonate fully. Whereas one ply heads, thinner heads, um, they speak a little bit quicker, a little bit easier, and with a little bit lighter touch. And that can be a good thing when you're playing jazz. Um, these drum heads that I have on here, the snare drum has an Ambassador X on it, which is an Ambassador, which is a one ply coated head, and then the X is just like a little bit more, and I like, I don't like using, when I'm playing jazz, I don't like using any moon gel or any dampening on the snare drum, because that'll start to kill the musicality of the snare drum, uh, especially if you're playing brushes. So the, the Ambassador is cool, but the Ambassador X gives it a little more just, uh, it thickens it up a little bit and I don't have to dampen it at all. So that's why I like the Ambassador X on the snare drum. Coated so that I can play brushes. The Toms have Fiber Skin 3 FA. I don't know what the FA is, but they're Remo Fiber Skin heads. Um, and then the kick drum, there's a Fiber Skin head on the front and a Vintage A uh, Remo head on the batter side. I don't know what that is. It has vintage in it, so that's probably why I bought it, but it's coated. All these drum heads are coated, and I think they all sound very, very, very musical. I really love how these are tuned. They're tuned higher so that they speak quicker, easier, and I don't have to hit them as hard to get them to sing. Tip number two, cymbals. Uh, as most of us know, that jazz is all about the ride cymbal. Um, so, 
the bigger, the heavier your cymbals are, the heavier your sound is going to be, and the less jazz you're going to sound, right? So this ride cymbal is the best ride cymbal on planet Earth. It's the Istanbul Agap Signature ride cymbal, 24 inch. Um, it is just the best. I like it because I can crash it, but it doesn't get out of control. I can play the bell, but it doesn't get out of control. And that all helps me play jazz because if I'm playing like a Latin jazz thing, I can play the bell and it's not crazy and pingy and ugh. And I can play up tempo kind of dig in aggressive stuff on the ride cymbal and it doesn't wash out and you don't lose the stick definition. The cymbal has a lot of definition, but not a lot of volume, which is great for jazz because again, we don't want to overpower. A lot of times when it's an acoustic bass and all that stuff, we don't want to overpower the other instruments, a saxophone, an acoustic saxophone. Um, so ride cymbal is very important. Uh, if you have a very pingy ride cymbal, it's going to be hard to sound jazz no matter what you do. You can change the sticks you use. Uh, for jazz, I use the SD2 Boleros from Vic Firth. The tip is crazy on them, and I think they sound, it sounds just totally amazing on ride cymbals for jazz. It's very light, but super articulate. Um, so switching out your cymbals, if you have really heavy rock and roll sounding cymbals, literally just switching your cymbals can make you sound jazzier. And then on top of that, with the ride cymbal especially, um, a lot of people when they're playing the ride pattern, uh, which is spang, spang, lang, spang, lang, great. Uh, I was told when I first started really getting into jazz by a good friend of mine, Brandon Hayes, if you accent two and four, so spang, spangalang, 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 it'll start to swing more. So I'll play the ride pattern without accenting two and four, and then I'll play it while accenting two and four, and I think you'll hear the difference. So without accents for two or three measures, and then with accents. One, two, a one, two, three, four. grooves a little bit more, it swings a little bit more, and that's important. So, change out your cymbals and really focus on your getting your ride cymbal in shape. Adding two and four on that ride pattern is gonna help. Tip number three for sounding jazzier is dynamics, okay? So, and I don't mean just playing all of your drums and everything louder or softer, I mean inner dynamics. A lot of people when they start playing jazz, they say, oh, I have to use the hi-hat and I have to play the hi-hat, so, what they sound like is this. That to me does not feel that good and does not swing because the hi-hat is way too loud. Just because you're stepping the hi-hat on two and four doesn't mean you have to smash it on two and four every time, okay? It can be there just to add a little bit of glue, a little bit of backbeat, right? So I'll play what I was just playing with the hi-hat way too overbearing and loud, and then I'll play it where it's a little more subtle, a little groovier. Totally changes everything depending on how loud I play the hi-hat. And it's the same while comping. Um, you've probably heard it before, but comping is when, you know, comping is playing different figures behind a soloist. And usually when we think of comping, we think of exercises to do between the foot, the kick drum, and the snare drum, or just different patterns to play on the snare drum. Comping is important, but a lot of people, no matter what exercises you're practicing comping, a lot of people are just playing what they're doing too loud. Um, so I'll comp too loud, and then I'll comp an appropriate dynamic, I think, and I think you'll hear the difference between the two.
Okay, so as you can see, it dramatically changes how distracting I am based on how loud or soft I play the snare drum. Dynamics are just something you have to think about. Nothing should really typically overtake your ride cymbal. Hi-hat doesn't have to be too loud. Your comping, make sure that's not too loud. All of that stuff, no matter what you're playing, if you get your dynamics, your inner dynamics, between each four, three or four things you're doing, if you get all of that in check, you'll instantly sound groovier, swingier, and jazzier. Tip number four, uh, and I'm saving this toward the back because again, I never want this to be the first thing we think of, but gear can make a difference. That's not always an option, which is why I don't lead with it, and I never want, for me, I, I never want to need gear to pull off a thing, right? If I need to get a bit, like, if I need to sound jazzy, I don't want to have to have this ride cymbal to sound jazzy. Because what if I'm in a session where they don't have that ride cymbal? Or what if I'm playing five different songs in a set and one of them needs a jazzy thing and one of them, I'm not going to switch my ride in between. I don't have a drum tech doing that for me in the local Nashville show I'm playing. So I need, for me, I need to be able to sound jazzy no matter what. But... Gear can help. As you see, this is a small drum set. This is an 18 inch kick drum, a 12 inch tom, but it's a shallow depth, and a 14 inch tom in a little bit shallow depth. I think that helps a lot. And again, with cymbals, it's hugely, 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 just, it, it'll make you so much jazzier if you have jazzy cymbals, right? And even sticks, it comes down to, if you know, playing jazz with five Bs, extreme five Bs is gonna sound very different than playing jazz with these boleros or some five A's. So gear can make a big difference. If you're playing jazz a lot, I would say maybe think about buying. I would, the first thing I do, if you're like, I wanna start playing jazz, the first thing I would do is get a really nice ride cymbal that's appropriate for jazz. And then on top of that, I would get a little kick drum. I think 18 inch kick drums um, are, are amazing and I love them and I think that especially for jazz, they can um, immediately make things jazzier because you can tune it open and it's not too ringy and tubby and whatever. And, but gear can help a significant amount when you're trying to sound jazzier. But again, it's never my go-to because I want to rely on my skills and my sound before I let any gear dictate whether or not I can pull something off. Number five, um, less is more. That, I think a lot of times when we think jazz and we're not used to playing jazz, we think, oh, jazz is improvised and it's busy. and So we just end up playing a lot of notes that we don't need to play. Um, take the ride cymbal, for instance. A lot of people think you have to, if you're playing jazz, you have to play spang, spang, a lang, spang, a lang. You don't. Quarter notes can swing just as much as Spang-A-Lang can swing. Um, then I'll show you. So I'll play a couple bars of Spang-A-Lang, and then I'll play a couple bars of just quarter notes. Let me fix these hi-hats real quick. Right? So I don't need to play every spangling to make it swing. Uh, and that goes for everything. Just because you're comping behind a soloist doesn't mean that every single triplet subdivision has to be filled in to the nth degree, right? You can leave space. You can leave just quarter notes on the ride cymbal. You don't even have to step hi-hat. Um, a lot of people think that you have to keep hi-hat on two and four when you're playing jazz. But if you listen to Bill Evans trio, um, Paul Motion, there's a lot of times where he's not playing hi-hat at all, and if he is, he's playing it on like crazy beats that aren't two and four. Um, so you don't have to fill everything up. Those are all starting places. Those are all rules. Spangling, hi-hat on two and four. Those are all rules that can eventually be broken or distorted and twisted at your discretion when you start mastering those rules. So just because that's the way the book said it doesn't mean that you have to do it. And I think that if you listen to jazz a lot and you start digesting and you start really getting it into your ears how certain players played, um, all of that stuff will start showing up in your playing. And as a bonus tip, what you can do is you can move all your ideas to the and. 
Um, so what I mean by that is stop playing beat one. Stop playing beat one. Um, that's my bonus tip. Too many drummers uh, who just start playing jazz end all their fills and all their comping ideas on beat one. It's not what you want to do that's very square, that's very predictable, and that's not really what jazz is. So try moving all of your fills and your comping ideas to the ands. Uh, one, two, three, four, and, two, three, four, and, instead of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. It'll sound a lot jazzier. Those are my five tips to say, and a bonus tip on how to sound jazzier. Let me know in the comments if this helped uh, or if you have other suggestions of how to sound jazzy. Um, and I'll see you in the next lesson.